Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I appreciate you uh, joining us today uh, in spite of the polar vortex that's upon us, so I appreciate your uh, coming out. And I'm very excited about introducing today's speaker. Um, as Casey mentioned, I'm on the board of UC Smile, so I'm going to take a second to give a quick plug to that. You might have noticed there's a table out front, so if you want to be involved in an effort to start a local currency and develop it and strengthen it, please do. They have bumper stickers. I'm hawking our wares. They have bumper stickers and a little brochure. Uh, you can see what our wonderful UC local currency Smile looks like. Uh, you actually don't have to put this in your pocket. It's, this is just a model of it. Uh, it's really much more about this size. So feel free if you would like to get some local currency and support local businesses for it. They have them for sale out there uh, at the table. So please uh, do that after the talk here. Uh, and also last night I had the pleasure of meeting Paul uh, with a few UC Smile board members. Uh, Paul Glover is the founder of Ithaca Hours, one of the first local currency systems, the Ithaca Health Alliance, Philadelphia Orchard Project, Citizen Planners of Los Angeles, and a dozen more organizations. He is an author of several books and urban, and urban histories, including Hometown Money, How to Enrich Your Community with Local Currency, Deep Green Jobs, and Health Democracy, Liberating Americans from Health Insurance. He has degrees in marketing and in city management. After 35 years of community organizing on behalf of grassroots economic development and ecological repair, he started a consultancy called Green Planners to help communities prepare a secure and abundant future, uh, even while fuel and food costs rise. Please help me welcome Paul Glover. An honor to be invited to speak at the Friday Forum, which I understand has been mm, taking place continuously for nearly a hundred years. Uh, a long list of uh, wonderful, glorious humanitarians, probably some notorious escape criminals, I don't know. Uh, I tend to be on the more renegade end of that spectrum. Uh, having started, as, as has been said, uh, more than a dozen community organizations that, uh, that uh, model ecology and social justice in a grassroots initiative manner. Um, I haven't been caught yet for doing these, but uh, I have enjoyed very much the process of engaging with thousands of people to transfer authority to them over the basics of everyday life. And the th I'll introduce briefly Ithaca Hours, a local currency that I invented in 1991. During the Great Recession of 1991, which of course is mild in comparison with what we face today, what many people face today. Um, I have a background in graphic arts, in journalism, and in arrogance. And so I started, I designed paper money for Ithaca, New York, a city of about 30,000 people, uh, and began to walk around prototype designs of this money, and spoke with thousands of people, and said, this is going to be money. We'll trade it with each other. Sign up here. And to their credit, they didn't say, well, this is a dumb idea. You'll get us in trouble. They signed up and said, well, let's try it out. And uh, within a few months, published the first directory of, of hundreds of ways that this money could be spent within the Ithaca community. Denominated as ours, a measure steady as the clock. One Ithaca hour equaling an hour of basic labor, or $10, which was at the time the average of wages and salaries per hour in the Ithaca area. An emblem of fairness in how people are paid. The half hour, therefore, $5 value printed on hemp paper, hemp paper, half of which was from California, an illegal paper. A qu 
quarter hour worth $2.50, featuring Ithaca's children. And on the back, um, Finger Lakes Farms planting Ithaca's future. The, the eighth hour, featuring a salamander, $1.25. On the back, a bug found only in the Ithaca area. A bug that eats bacteria that eat slime mold that devour fallen trees that decompose trees into soil. Soil, the foundation of agriculture, thus of civilization. So we honor this bug on our money. The two-hour note printed on cattail paper harvested by the railroad tracks and pulped into paper with a watermark. Harder to counterfeit than dollars. I'll pass these around. Please give them back. They are real money. This is the one-hour commemorative note featuring uh, Beverly Martin, uh, an African-American lifelong educator in, in the area. First paper one in the United States. <coughs> So, we, we have transacted millions of dollars of value of this money since 1991, making loans up to $30,000 value, interest-free. And that's a fundamental monetary revolution making grants to over 100 community organizations so far, organizations dedicated to the community. So the theme of this talk is the power of community currency. And I've subtitled, I, I have sorted this out, identify four powers that a local currency has. The first, of course, obviously, would be to meet no local needs. We needed more money in Ithaca, and so we printed it ourselves. If, you're, if you need more money, print it yourselves. Money is, among other things, official-looking pieces of paper. So, you're an American. Print it yourself. It doesn't look like dollars. It hasn't got the same shape as dollars. It doesn't pretend to be dollars. And so curiously, it is not illegal in the United States to print your own money. The FBI, the IRS, the Secret Service, the Federal Reserve Board were all contacted by the media the media said, is this legal? Can they get away with this? And none of these agencies could find a law specifically against average people printing their own money denominated as ours. Not that I cared. I mean, I thought it was illegal and that was part of the fun. But it turned out to be OK with people who have official authority. So, uh, I talked with thousands of people literally and got hundreds of people to be pioneers, published a newspaper called, Ithaca, called Our Town. There's a tattered example of it, explaining in every issue why it was valuable to have our own money, and including listings of the thousands of ways, eventually thousands of ways, you could spend this money for all the basics, food, housing, health care, and all the fun stuff. Movie theaters, bowling alleys, health clubs, restaurants, thousands of ways, thousands of people, and 500 businesses agreed to accept this money as though it were real. And of course, it was real money because it was backed by real people. Whereas, by contrast, the dollars could be considered funny money. It's backed by, now I think it's a $16 trillion national debt, which will never be repaid. And that debt is held extensively by foreign entities. 
who don't care about what happens to us or our communities. So the local currency has that power. We, we, through the local currency, have more money in the community. We have more control of money. We have more control over how money is invested because we make loans without charging interest to things we think are valuable. We, uh, we decrease our dependence on external entities, remote boardrooms and distant legislatures for the availability of money. We, we strengthen local businesses, small businesses particularly, connect them in a network of uh, affection and loyalty with the people locally who have money to spend. We, we put a boundary around money. Well, our Ithaca time zone was about 20 mile radius. We issued money into anyone within 20 miles who agreed to accept this money. And we paid them a small starter amount. We issued the money to them when they agreed to be published in our newsletter, backing this money, providing that fundamental service to our monetary system. Uh, we took control of interest rates. We beat the banks. We made loans without charging interest. And I think especially importantly, we enhanced a sense of community. You know, if you're in a community where you're surrounded by people you can't trust and who you are afraid of, you have to lock your doors and you feel you must compete with, that's a drag. But through this community currency, this process, creating a culture of solidarity we were emphasizing that within Ithaca, you were surrounded by people who shared the values of equity and social justice and environmental repair. And humanity as well. I think that is the greatest contribution of our local currency, even greater than the millions of dollars value transacted. We uh, we facilitated that sense of humanity in the marketplace. Marketplace, a real place, a geographical place, not just a global abstraction trading digits at the speed of light, but a real geographic place at our farmer's market and our retail spaces, individuals among one another, where people became friends and lovers and political allies, the fundamental of democracy. So that's one, that's, that's one of the powers of local currency to meet local needs. The second I would consider to be models. Whenever I started any of these organizations, I've intended them deliberately to be models that can be replicable because locality is the incubator of social progress. Everything that we rely on, which is normal today, began in a locality with somebody or a few people around a kitchen table or in a garage who invented the airplane. The wheel, at some time in prehistory, somebody figured out a wheel, and even more impressively, the axle. You know, it didn't start as sort of like a global consensus. It started within, an, within a community, within some place. We will never be able to pinpoint some day in prehistory. And of course, the Wright brothers, I mean, these people didn't even have college degrees. Must say this in a college setting. Mm. My greatest respectability was teaching urban studies at Temple University in Pennsylvania. But I acknowledged and I emphasized to the students that the greatest inventions 
upon which we rely were invented by people who have no formal schooling or little, little formal schooling. The airplane, the light bulb, the wheel, the windows, floors and ceilings and walls. These were invented by people who just figured it out. And uh, so local, local examples that can be replicable are really powerful. And you are all authorized as citizens of America to invent, to establish novel solutions to problems that are not being solved otherwise. Um, so implied and implicit and explicit in producing your own money is a critique of the current way that money is issued. The, if money were issued uh, fairly, equitably, sufficiently, well, it would never have occurred to us to print our own money, to trade our own money. We would be quite happy just to trade dollars. We did, wouldn't care where they came from. There would be enough of them, and enough of us would have enough of them. And uh, because we saw a maldistribution in the availability of money, it was sensible to print our own. Uh, I would invite you to consider. Let me ask you this question. Here's a, do banks exist primarily to keep our money safe? Someone is laughing. Oh, everyone's laughing. Do insurance companies exist primarily to give us peace of mind? Do mortgage companies exist primarily to house us? Does the electric company exist primarily to brighten our lives? Does the gas company exist primarily to keep us warm? Does the grocer, grocery store exist primarily to nourish us? Do schools exist primarily to excite us about learning and prepare us to creatively engage the problems of our times. Perhaps this is the case extensively throughout this university. Do prisons exist primarily to deter crime and prepare inmates to return constructively to society? Does govern government exist primarily to fairly allocate resources? and to mediate disputes among citizens. Primarily, I mean, primarily. Does the military exist primarily to defend us from invasion? These are challenging questions. You meet, may each have different answers to them. Does television exist primarily to entertain us? Or does it have a different agenda? Or does the media, does news media exist primarily to educate us fully and fairly about the issues of the day so that we may become well-informed citizens and effective act, uh, participants in the civic life of our communities and nation? Uh, you may answer this differently than I do, but I feel that there is a need for great change. I feel as though the large institutions as which, upon which we rely have become, as I characterize it, like sumo wrestlers, you know, on a basketball court. You know, it's like they are very big, and there are all these little guys running around amid them and they're trying to comprehend what's going on. They're trying to control, maintain their traditional power. So that to me is a third power of local currency to shift power toward the grassroots. 
to return initiative over society, over the direction of our economy to people who most urgently need control over the economy. A lot of people in this country are being left behind. And even those of us who are doing well enough within the existing institutions might have pause about the way that money is being invested The fourth power of local currency, I think, most ambitiously, is to rebuild civilization. To totally rebuild, reboot civilization. We've heard critiques, concerns about our dependence on fossil fuels. And big money tends to move toward Compl cons uh, toward aggressive extraction of fossil fuels, toward maintaining the current hegemony of fossil fuel use and dependence. So, to assist, to facilitate, to promote transfer of investment in the direction of alternatives to fossil fuel, outstandingly toward efficiencies. The best fuel is no fuel, a fuel which is not necessary because we have created efficiencies. Houses which, we, which need virtually no fossil fuel for heating and cooling because they are solar oriented. So, There are, there, there are the, the various elements of rebuilding society. There's the financial rebuilding of society. And I would, I would recommend, and I have ventured to articulate a process by which we would make a national transition from dollar-denominated money toward our-denominated money. This is a prototype of an our-denominated national currency. This is the height of arrogance and the most fun. Um, it says on the back, this labor credit employs Americans to fix our cities and farms. Please accept it, then spend it. Uh, this is signed by Patch Adams, who now lives in Urbana. Some of you have heard of Patch Adams, the Dr. Clown whose life story was told in the movie starring Robin Williams. He lives in Philadelphia now. He lives in Urbana now. He's authorized me to establish the first Patch Adams Free Clinic, other than at his Gesundheit Institute in West Virginia. I'll pass this around, too. Somebody's got my money. <laughs> The money was passed around at a rotary meeting once, and some of it didn't come back. <laughs> I trust you, though. Um, so this is the financial change, a transition from an economy which depends on dollar-denominated, a system which is controlled by a Federal Reserve Board, which is itself not federal, but managed and operated by a consortium of the largest banks in the country. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so the, the financial change, the, the structural change, rebuilding our civilization our built environment absolutely entirely so that it needs at least fossil fuels. We have these wonderful buildings here and they are pumping fossil fuels to keep them warm enough or cool enough year after year after year. They are connecting us to, I think, a very inglorious future for the next generations. The great challenge of current generations just to reconfigure our civilization, our cities particularly, 
where most people live, so that they are least dependent on fossil fuels. And there are wonderful examples of alternatives. In 1983, I wrote the book Los Angeles, A History of the Future. I started the organization in LA, titled Citizen Planners of Los Angeles, dedicated to ecological urban design. And this engages the engineering processes. This engages every discipline in rethinking, reconfiguring the city as we know it, a city entirely different than we know it, which decentralizes authority to the grassroots, which relies on decentralized technologies. Uh, Currently, our, our technologies, the technologies upon which we rely, are extensively centralized. And um, people make good money through that centralization. But the, the future generations do not necessarily, will not pro necessarily prosper through the continuation of these processes. There are wonderful alternatives. Check out Earthships if you're into. Uh, architecture or engineering. Check out earth ships, buildings which need no fossil fuel for heating and cooling, which are made of recycled materials. So I imagine within a hundred years, um, anyone living in this latitude will live in such structures or will escape to Mexico. Uh, then culturally, Gigantic cultural changes, ideas of, of success and progress and purpose. The ideas of success and progress and purpose upon which we currently de depend are extensively dollar denominated, dollar defined. The more dollars we have, the more successful we are, the more validated our purpose. So for my part, I've articulated different ideas of success and progress, and uh, invite through reading of any of the books that I have written, specific reassurance that there are practical alternatives. Uh, not all of which, I, of course, I have invented, but there are thousands of organizations throughout this country and, are, and millions throughout the world at the grassroots level proving that there are wonderful alternatives to the way things currently are done. And, 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 and finally, culturally, I think that What gets me up in the morning is that cities are full of beautiful children, innocent children, maybe until the age of two anyhow, and they deserve cities as beautiful as they are. And if our ambition were to create and to enact systems processes, economies, and money which made cities as beautiful as these children. If that were the operating principle of our personal processes, definitions of success, I think then, through that guidance, we would become gradually, over the next hundred years, a thriving civilization and a credit to humanity on the planet Earth. I invite your questions and answers. Thank you. Now the mic. I always jump on the mic, then I don't have to.
have to do as much editing um, if nobody else is already. Uh, money is about quantitizing things. I was hoping you would say a few things about how it's working out, and I don't know how you get at that. What small, how many small businesses, what percentages them are getting hours? What's the hours circulation compared to the federal dollar in the, in the, in the community? And then, I don't want to ask just a nuts and bolts question. Uh, philosophically, are you familiar with David Graeber of the, he's kind of a philosopher, anarcho philosopher of the Occupy movement. He has a book called, called Debt, the First 5,000 Years. And he corrects a misapprehension of how um, currency developed. You know, we have this sort of idea that it just sort of organically grew up, and he says that's really not true. Uh, it was more always a construction of the state. Uh, once you needed armies, you had to levy currency and pay people in back in that. And before that, it was much more collegial and bartering in the, in the, the so-called world. So um, pick or choose or whatever you want to do. Well, certainly there's a big, there's a, a massive history of the evolution of money from barter to state issued. Uh, and in between there, of course, money was initially regional in nature, necessarily, because economies were regional in nature. Gradually they became national. The king and queen issued money, and they said, this is fiat money. Use it, accept it, or be killed. Fiat money. Let it be. Uh, or other question, yes. The simpler question, I mean, there's, I could go on and on and on about the, the evolution of money from a barter to a national currency. And uh, local currency being a, an emphasis on regaining control more locally and regionally over monetary issue and utilization. Your other question, your first question was? Oh, yeah, yeah. A total of, uh, in Ithaca, New York, a total of $110,000 face value has been issued. And the multiplier, of course, in a system where the money does not leave town, dollars arrive, they shake a few hands, and they leave again. And they do whatever they want to do. They, whether they fight wars, they they drill oil, whatever but dollars do in the prevailing and conventional economy. But in Ithaca, the, the hours once issued circulate with a boundary around them generally, though I have spent Ithaca hours in Philadelphia and in New York City among people who had heard of them and were willing to accept them because they figured someday they would go to Ithaca. Generally, otherwise, though, they circulate within the Ithaca area specifically. Um, during the first eight years of the development of the Ithaca Hour system, as I said, I've talked with thousands of individuals and 500 businesses maximum at one time were accepting Ithaca Hours. Millions of dollars transacted. After eight years, I transferred the system to an elected board of, an elected board. And they began to ad administer the system through monthly meetings. By contrast, I was managing the system through daily on the street conversation. To the credit of the people in Ithaca, most of the weight of expanding the system was due to tens of thousands of conversations among people in Ithaca who explained it to each other, who promoted it to one another. But there needed to be a pivotal networker in the system, who was available and identifiable every single day on the street to promote, facilitate, and troubleshoot the circulation 
of the money. Once it transferred to an elected board of directors, as I say, who administered it through monthly meetings, it began to taper. The credibility of the money, the interventions with retailers particularly who accepted and, and accumulated a lot of the money, declined. And so the system today is a small part of what it had achieved at its peak. And I emphasize this wherever I speak about local currency, the necessity of engaging, employing professionally a networker to promote, facilitate, and troubleshoot circulation of the money. And a networker should be an honored profession in every neighborhood in every community. Because the networker is connecting people. What can be more democratic in a democracy than connecting people to one another? Skills, time, tools, and talent, however modest they may be, connected to one another and to the most impressive uh, retail offerings. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I wanted to know if you would, if it was this, some of the, like you did grants, you did loans, you did some of this troubleshooting, and uh, I wondered if that's, do you have a resource that, I work with the, the local currency here, and just want to know if there's ways to, to, to promote the, sa the same way and to have it operate. Could we give loans? Could we get gra give grants and so on? Or should I just call you? We began to make uh, grants of the local currency to about, I think it was a maximum initially of 10% of the money otherwise issued. Uh, soon after we began, as a way to promote, to emphasize, to underscore the, the value of having a local currency. So some organizations within Ithaca had lost state or federal funding and were happy to receive 150 or 200, $200 worth of our local currency. We merely asked them for a letter saying how they would use it, what they needed and how they would use it. And uh, we issued the money to them. We asked them also to file a report after they had spent it about how they had spent it. And uh, after a time, I think a year and a half, two years, we began to offer loans of the money without interest, as I said, without interest charges, because we earned instead what I called community interest. The greater strength within the community of organizations doing good things. Um, and our largest loan was $30,000 of our own local money. That was a tall stack of our own local cash. We had, I had printed up two hour notes, two hours, $20. The board laughed at me at the time, but eventually, in fact, when 2000, uh, when the year 2000, when Y2K came around and people were concerned whether computers were gonna fail and our dollars would be foobarred, screwed, worthless, People started to buy Ithaca hours, two hour notes at a time. At any rate, we made a loan of $30,000 equivalent value of local currency, ironically, to a bank. The credit union was building new headquarters and they said, well, we would like to take a loan of $30,000 of value of this money. And uh, 
they required their contractors to accept 5% of the value of the contract in the form of local currency. Otherwise, we made lots of loans. I would go to local businesses and I'd say, what are you having done around here? And they'd say, well, we're gonna get some painting done or shelving put in. And I said, you know, instead of paying out dollars up front to have that done, we'll make you a loan of local currency and we'll find you someone who will do the painting, the plumbing, the carpentry, electric, sheetrocking, flooring, whatever you need here for Ithaca hours. And um, this, they were very happy to receive an interest-free loan of whatever hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. They were able to repay that on a very easy schedule. If they had enough Ithaca hours, they could repay with Ithaca hours. If they didn't have Ithaca hours, they could repay with dollars. And in fact, that was a source of dollar income for the system when we needed dollars to print our local currency. In fact, we had a local printer who accepted Ithaca hours for part of the price of printing the Ithaca hours. So he printed the Ithaca hours and we paid him part of the price of pay, printing the Ithaca hours with the Ithaca hours he had printed. We had a lot of fun. I mean, I think that's an important part of this. this. This is fun. Social change is enormous fun. I met thousands of people I never otherwise would have met. Liberal, conservative, undecided, independent, indistinct. The full range of people in the Ithaca area who I otherwise would never have met. I published 300 success stories in the newspaper, Our Town, to make vivid the value of local currency. Anecdotally, I asked people, how did you earn the money? How did you spend the money? And what do you think of the money? Lovely little vignettes, people said, Oh, I earned it for this thing or that thing or the other thing. I spent it for this, that, or the other. And I like it because of this, that, and the other. Uh, my favorite stories are, on, on the one case, a little girl. Uh, her mother was renting an apartment to a, a student from Buffalo. She met the student from Buffalo, and she says, what does your city's money look like? A generation of children in Ithaca who assume that money is whatever you make it. The, the fellow who was walking around in New York City and who was mugged, the mugger says, give me your money. A guy from Ithaca says, well, I've only got Ithaca hours and I don't know that they would do you any good here. The mugger became so fascinated by Ithaca hours that he quit demanding dollars. And they had a lovely conversation about money. So that to me is a greater contribution and greater impact for local currency even than the specific dollar equivalent values transacted. Yes, sir. Right, any more questions? Yes, Danielle. Oh, hey, Paul. Welcome back. A um, couple of things. First, Urbana used to print its own money in the Great Depression. That's one of the ways our city actually survived that situation. We are getting in a Great Depression um, of a different sort, so it might be a timely moment to think about it. Uh, I have two questions, if I can get away with asking two. Uh, very different questions. The first is the mechanics question. And this is somewhat for the UC Smiles folks, actually. I was so excited to see local currency crop up. There was actually a group of people who used to meet in my house in 1995 when I first moved here um, on Nevada Street. And they met for 
a year and a half talking about how to start a local currency, and they never actually started a local currency. So when I saw UC Smile starting, I was really excited, and I, I haven't been able to figure out how to get in. Like, I don't actually want to pay money to get UC Smiles. I want to give time. So I don't want to participate. It doesn't make sense for me to take dollars and contribute them to UC Smiles. So I'm trying to understand, the first is mechanics, just how does it, how do you get this stuff in circulation and keep it in circulation? And the second question is, I work, um, I am oftentimes the person on the other end of the phone of people who either don't have homes, don't have money, uh, homes, don't have food, don't have a baby uh, seat, uh, don't have a job. I oftentimes weekly answer phone calls about people, and particularly folks with felony convictions who have a legal barrier to accessing money and therefore accessing certain goods and services you buy with money. So I'm wondering, have you seen, it seems like that's a natural growth area for this concept of local currency, is to specifically to work with those folks um, in this community. It's a very high volume of people, almost every locally born African American male between the ages of 18 and 25 who I have come in contact with is dealing with some kind of felony conviction. And it's oftentimes for not violent offenses. So there's been a systematic attempt by the previous state's attorney and the current state's attorney to mark young African American males in our community with felony status for nonviolent offenses. So as a result of that multiple decades of legacy, we've got lots and lots of people in our community who can't access cash because they're not, they uh, have barriers to employment. So how could you see smiles or how has Ithaca Hours helped to overcome this specific barrier too, especially folks who otherwise don't have the opportunity to use dollars to meet their needs? Those are my two questions, mechanics, and overcoming barriers, especially those with felt convictions. Clearly, yeah, that uh, there's a, uh, a school to prison pipeline, there's a new form of slavery abroad in the land, there's a prison industrial complex, and uh, the Greens called me up a few weeks ago and asked me to run for governor of Pennsylvania. I said, okay, and this is one of the big issues. In Philadelphia, there are 300 people, 300,000, residents who have been in jail and returned from jail. And uh, the system is rigged, the game is rigged, clearly. And local currency is a component of regaining local control, neighborhood control, uh, with the values of ecology and social justice. Uh, and as I was saying, the wholesale, gigantic rebuilding of civilization so that everybody has value, everyone can contribute, that we have full employment, and that, that, that counterposed to our current system of, well, we have, uh, we have a an unemployed pool, particularly racially identified, who we can exploit to fill our prisons. That's the game that prevails at this time. And uh, currency is a component of that, mechanics of that contribution are that, in Ithaca, for example, uh, our, social our, our social services agency allowed people to earn Ithaca hours without compromising their eligibility for social services. Yeah. Um, local currency enables people to start up a business. Uh, without having formal business structure. Um, 
after the 1992 uh, Rodney King Rebellion in Los Angeles, I drafted a design for Malcolm X money. I said, you're never going to be able to get anywhere by depending on dollars and donations. After, in 1992, the gangs of LA got together and said, you know, give us the money. We will, co we will collaborate to rebuild Los Angeles. Of course, the money didn't want to do that. They wanted to retain control. So I offered the suggestion, Malcolm X money, a Malcolm X hour. And uh, everything big starts small, a modest suggestion for taking control of money and capital, for enabling people within a neighborhood or community to take control of the fundamentals of everyday life rather than to depend on the prevailing authorities who don't care about what happens to the community. I would be happy to speak with you further about the specific nuts and bolts of inserting, expanding, promoting local currency as an alternative for economic strength within the neighborhoods in Champaign-Urbana that are most left behind. In Ithaca, we made determined efforts to make sure that people were welcomed into the system who were not of the initial hippie culture. I was very gratified, especially gratified, that in fact we reached across the political spectrum and across the cultural spectrum to engage the fullest variety of people in, Phil in Ithaca. We had, my gosh, conservatives, the most conservative people in Ithaca, who loved local currency because they didn't like depending on a federal government either. They were more libertarian. And uh, people across the, the, the ethnic and generational spectrum who liked local currency because it gave them more access, more control, more participation more initiative. So it is, a, it is a tool among many. There are many tools in the, in, the, in the range of community economic development processes. Regional stock exchanges. I've been promoting having stock exchanges which are regional and focused on the priorities of ecology and social justice. Bringing capital, gathering capital of all kinds for eco-development regionally. Uh, developed a program called Green Labor Administration, GLAD, GLAD which would be like a, a non-governmental, non-profit WPA, reviving the WPA, the Works Progress Administration for our time. So that is, I think, the, the foundation and purpose of a local currency, to lift the boats most sinking behind. Yeah, I just got a nuts and bolts question, I guess. Uh, if, after you print the money, how do you actually get it into someone's hand to spend it? Golly, I should have started out the whole conversation with that. I mean, when people agree to be published in this directory, they were issued four Ithaca hours, $40 value. 
That was payment to them for being willing to participate in the system. They were not given the money, which suggests a random distribution. We were creating the credibility of the money, a contractual connection. And uh, secondly, when people reaffirmed their willingness to accept the money, after a year, they were issued an additional allotment of the money. Uh, thirdly, the money was issued, as I said, as grants to community organizations, over a hundred community organizations so far. Fourthly, the money was issued as loans without charging interest. And fifthly, when people bought it into circulation, they would come to a local business and with dollars, they would buy it into circulation. My gosh, uh, during the 90s, Japan had stagflation. The banks of Japan could hardly give money away. People did not want to borrow money. There was no confidence in the economy sufficient. So the Japanese were all over Ithaca. We had NGOs, we had uh, government officials, we had academics. We had tourists in general, people from Japan, all over Ithaca, fascinated by local currency, and they bought Ithaca hours and took them back to Japan. That was the fifth way that Ithaca hours were issued. And in fact, at one point, 1996, I was doing one, two, or three media interviews each and every day about Ithaca hours. And people were coming from all over the world and around the country to visit Ithaca because of Ithaca Hours. And they bought Ithaca Hours and took them away. And so people started to ask me, where were the Ithaca Hours? So we had to emphasize then loans of Ithaca Hours to get more money into circulation. <laughs>